this video talks about bacterial genetics and how you can kind of easily remember which age groups falls under which category and which bacteria or which virus is more prone to causing meningitis in which age group okay so the age groups are actually divided into four categories they are from zero to six months six months to six years six years to 60 years and 60 years plus or elderly now see how there's a nice ring to it and the reason they put a nice ring to it just so that you can kind of easily remember them um, and recall them and decide which category does your patient fall under and this is not a hard and fast rule but this is an easier way of remembering okay so the first one has a nice ring to it the first one is called the mnemonic is Bell, B E L, B for group B, E for E. coli, L for listeria. Okay, so group B would be the first choice, E. coli followed by group B, and listeria the last. So if you have all these choices, and if you have a patient who is from zero to six months, if you pick listeria because that's the one you remember, that won't be the correct one. The most common would be group B, followed by E. coli, followed by listeria. Okay, so that's zero to six months. So I'm going to now generalize some of the uh, infections or some of the meningitis between these three groups because there is a lot of similarity. For example, the first one, from six months all the way to the elderly, the most common meningitis would be strep pneumo. Okay this is going to follow throughout except zero to six months okay that's the number one infectious agent that causes meningitis in any age group above six months now since see this is bel bell this one the zero to 60 years sorry 60 years plus uh here the you can kind of remember this as sgl Okay, the G would be gram negative rods, and L is listeria. Okay, so this listeria kind of comes back from zero to six all the way to 60 again. So we're going to see it again after 60 years in elderly patients for listeria. And G is gram negative rods, you kind of have to remember that one. What about six months to six years? Okay, so after strep pneumo, the next most common is going to be Neisseria meningitis. Okay, and this is going to be common in both age groups from six months all the way to 60 years. So this is going to be here as well. Okay, now what about after meningitis? After that, you have SNEH. Okay, and E is going to be enterovirus okay what about h h is going to be haemophilus influenza okay so s and e h and then e h is going to switch here and you're going to have h and s n h e and this e this h is going to be h s v one and this e is going to be enterovirus this is just switched from zero to six months see enterovirus came before now enterovirus is going to come here and age is going to go above but this is not the same age see this is haemophilus influenza and here it's hsv1 another thing you have to remember is that the most common meningitis in uh, teens is going to be neisseria meningitis which falls under this category now you could be asking me well when you say enterovirus what do you mean by that okay so what really falls under enterovirus so some of the common organisms that falls under the enterovirus that causes meningitis is going to be coxsackie okay there is going to be hiv it's going to be hsv2 okay 
And the reason I say HSV2 and not HSV1 is because HSV1 causes meningitis. Other causes of enterovirus is going to be varicella and also West Nile virus. That's also here. West Nile. So all these are going to fall under the enteroviruses. Now, will this category really follow for HIV patients? Not really. For HIV patients, there is a whole different category, okay? For HIV patients, you are going to have cryptococcus, which is going to cause meningitis as the most common cause, followed by CMV, followed by toxo, followed by JC. So if you can remember, is CCTJ. If that helps, it helps me. So these would be the categories for HIV viruses.